We'll start off with coconut water kefir, one of the healthiest drinks that I regularly rely on for gut health. Kefir originated from the Caucasus Mountains near the Russian border, where it was traditionally made using raw milk. Kefir can be made with any sugary medium, such as sugar water, or like we're doing here with coconut water, which is naturally sweet. And then you add in your kefir grains, which is the self-propagating culture made out of bacteria and yeast. So every time you make a batch, you're going to get another culture of these grains and you can either reuse them to make more or give them to a friend and share them with others. One of the beauties of coconut water kefir is that you get all of the benefits from coconut water without the high sugar intake. So coconut water on its own is very high in minerals and amino acids and once it's fermented, it actually enhances the nutritional value of that and makes them more bioavailable. So the kefir grains, the microbiotic communities in them, really varies a lot depending on your geographical location or um, the growth conditions, such as temperature. In general, the microbiota of kefir is known to be a stable association of lactic acid bacteria, acetic acid bacteria, and yeast. Studies have shown that the species in each sample differed from one another, which indicates that species designation is not as important as the overall metabolic capacity of the microbiota community. The lactic acid producing bacteria have been found to have many benefits with respect to digestive symptoms, food allergies, and innate immunity. They've also been found to enhance natural killer cell activity, including cytotoxic activity against tumor formation. On the other hand, the acetic acid found in kefir has been isolated and has been recognized for its ability to improve blood sugar control through its interaction with starch digesting enzymes. The most predominant yeast found in kefir is called Zygosaccharomyces florentinus, and unsurprisingly, it's the most resilient species. Zygosaccharomyces has been found to produce a killer toxin that has been proposed to fight against pathogenic yeast such as candida. It's also in the same study they found that it has the ability to enhance the immune system modulation which fights against tumor formation. Water kefir has become a perfect dairy-free substitution for the traditional milk kefir. While usually it's recommended to use sugar water as your medium, coconut water makes a great substitution to get all of those extra benefits. Okay, let's start cracking coconuts. To make coconut kefir, what we'll need is four young coconuts, a quarter cup of the kefir grains, or four tablespoons, a, some kind of glass pitcher and strainer, a sterilized glass jar, a couple teaspoons of organic cane sugar for bottling, and some bottles. The first thing we'll do, as always, is sterilize our kitchen surface and all of the equipment that we'll be using to ensure that we won't get any unwanted bacteria into our ferments. Once that's done, we can start opening our coconuts. So there's plenty of coconut opener tool sets out there that can help you open young coconuts, but I like to use the back end of a knife. I used to make hundreds of gallons of coconut water keeper in carboys and I still stand behind this method. So I'll show you how I do it and you can give it a try. Basically, on the outer edge of the coconut, you find a spot and just, you'll follow a circle all the way around creating a hole. I usually go around twice just to ensure that I get all the way through the coconut shell. And then you can just use the end to gently lift it up. Voila! 
If opening a coconut still feels intimidating even after my tutorial, it's totally fine to use prepackaged coconut water. Just be sure that there aren't any added ingredients. The benefit to using these raw coconuts is that it hasn't been pasteurized, so you get that higher level of nutrients. With each coconut, you're going to want to pour the water into a glass pitcher or glass measuring cup through a strainer. This helps remove any of the woody pieces inside and also you want to be sure that you're not adding any pink coconut water to your fermentation vessel. Pink means that the coconut has gone past its expiration and one way to tell that you're buying a good coconut is to look at the bottom of it. If it's slightly pink, there's a good chance that the water inside is going to be pink. It's not always true, but I try to look at the bottom when I purchase my coconuts and also I'll feel each one and the heavier it is, the more liquid it's going to contain. If everything looks good, we can go ahead and strain each coconut water transfer into the jar, one at a time, followed by the quarter cup of kefir grains, just leaving about a quarter inch to a half inch of headspace. Once you're ready, go ahead and cover the jar with a cloth or paper towel and secure it with a rubber band. I use a cloth because it's environmentally friendly it's inexpensive and it works great. So one thing to keep in mind though, if you are going to use cloth, when you wash it, be sure not to use a scented laundry detergent because the chemicals can actually interfere with the microbial process during fermentation. Once you have your jar covered, place it out of direct sunlight in an environment with proper airflow. This is because it's not an anaerobic process, so you don't want to stick it underneath any cabinets. I learned this the hard way, but truly there's nothing that a little detective work can't figure out. After 24 to 48 hours, our kefir will be ready to transfer into bottles. So I prefer fermenting my kefir for 48 hours just because I feel like it's not fermented quite enough for me after a day, but you can test it out and see what you like because it's all preference. To transfer, we'll use a sterilized glass pitcher or measuring cup and a sterilized glass bottle. I have both a metal and plastic strainer here. I know there's some discrepancy about using these and while for your fermentation vessel, it should always be glass because the metal can interact with the acids and cause corrosion, and the plastics can leach toxins into your ferment. But if it's just simply for transferring, it's not going to affect the end product. Okay, so what we'll do is pour into our glass container and allowing the strainer to catch any of our kefir grains. And then carefully, we'll pour it into our jar. I add one teaspoon of sugar to each bottle to help with CO2 production in the second fermentation phase. You can also use fruit puree if you want as a substitution for sugar and added flavor. If you're using fruit puree, I use a tablespoon. And then we'll add the remaining kefir, leaving just a little headspace. Okay, so now it's time for the second fermentation. This is when we create the carbonation. 
And basically, we leave that headspace so the CO2 has a place to go, and when it dissolves back into the liquid, that's when the bubbles are formed. A lot of headspace will create more carbonation, and little to no headspace, it will be totally flat. Another reason you want to leave that space is because the pressure will build up and might cause a little explosion. So I'll let my drink sit out during second fermentation for about a week, typically. But if it's warmer out, it might only take a couple days. You just want to keep an eye on it and watch for bubble formation. Once you think it's ready, transfer it to the fridge and let it cool completely, so about 24 hours before you open it and enjoy it. Once you have your kefir bottled, we'll go ahead and reserve the kefir grains until the next time we use them. So I have a sterilized glass jar with one teaspoon of cane sugar as food for the grains. And then you want to be sure to use filtered water instead of tap water because tap water can have chlorine in it which can negatively affect the life of your starter. So we'll just carefully spoon the grains into the jar. The last for a couple weeks kept in the fridge with sugar, but I usually just make my batch once a week. 